putting your Penn State emails into the chat box for me. And we are going to go ahead and talk about lesson nine. This one's a pretty quick one, actually, because um, we're kind of building off of the idea that we have, um, you know, we know how to take samples. We know, you know, what each, what samples are you know, representing, what we use them for. Um, but now we're kind of talking about the difference between the samples and, um, you know, what happens that they are different um, from one another. So, so we remember that we talked about the law of large numbers before. Um, the fact that, you know, if you have, uh, you know, a large sample size, then we're saying we can say that is representative of the population. Uh, there's no such thing as a law of um, small numbers because, like we've always been talking about, you know, you don't want your sample size to be small. It's going to be unrepresented. If, you know, if I was trying to take a, um, a survey about all Penn State students and I took a sample of, you know, four people in my class, that's a small sample size, not very representative of the entire uh, of the entire campus there. So, um, and same thing, doesn't give us a lot of information. And then, you know, obviously we want that to have that large sample size because then that's allowing us to use that sample size to predict um, trends in the data, you know, so, but if we don't have that, then we can't do it. So that's the main idea there, just to kind of understand that, you know, just because we have, you know, a law of something, the opposite isn't always true. And it just kind of, you know, contradicts everything, um, you know, that is proven by the law of large numbers. Okay, so here we have uh, for the normal approximation method, and this kind of goes into, so uh, like we said, we were talking about samples still. So when you take uh, samples for the normal approximation method, you're going to take large random samples. And um, since once, we, like I said, they're big enough and they're random, they're randomized and you're not going to have bias and uh, they're going to be more representative of your population. So large random samples, uh, that's going to give you a more representative uh, sample of the population. And then this is just a quote here basically of what normal approximation is. is, is. I'm not, I'm not going to read it to you, you guys can read it, but um, it's literally just saying the fact that if you take a bunch of samples, if there's enough samples and it's random, whatever you get for your sample is going to basically look like the population, which is what we want, because we're using that sample to make an inference about it. Um, so yeah, these are just two, uh, these are two equations that we use for us, uh, for means and proportions in terms of when we're finding our standard error. Um, so we also call standard deviation um, of sample mean, we also call this standard error. Um, you also see it written like that. So standard error is another thing. So, but then remember for means, we're talking about quantitative variables. Um, and then for proportions, we're talking about, oops, categorical variables. Um, this is a simple thing that I feel like some people just kind of mess up on exam, like just because you, you can have the concept, everything right, you did all the problems right, but then just remembering, you know, the proportions go with categorical variables and means go with quantitative. I think that's something to keep in mind to make sure you have that right in your head. Um, and as you can see, it's a similar structure for both of the, uh, for both equations, uh, you know, you see we have our sample size and the denominator of both of them. Um, but yeah, so we, we are using um, our population proportions, standard deviation and whatnot to get these. Um, because remember, we're saying if our sample is big enough, we can use the population um, to say that it's approximately equal to this sample. So we're assuming that because if it's large enough. So that's why we are going to use our population standard deviation. So remember, sample standard deviation. Um, is written like this, it would just be an S, like lowercase s, and then it's something like sample um, proportion, that's gonna be our, um, our p hat, remember? So just uh, also, you know, remembering the different uh, symbols that we use in statistics to keep that in mind. So these are just equations for how to find that standard deviation, or like I said, the standard error of, if we're talking about a mean or a proportion there. All right. Okay, so these are the rules that have to apply for normal approximation. So uh, like I was talking about before, for samples that are for proportions, those are going to be our categorical variables. So our sample size times 1 minus p, so that's our probability of whatever we're looking for there. Uh, and then also our sample size times just um, our p in general, uh, they both have to be at least 5 for this to work. And another way that we also see this being written is when we have the n times np, this is going to be our number of successes. You might see it written like this before. So um, because that's 
your sample size, the amount of that sample size, you know, the probability of each of those happening. That's why it's your success is then n times one minus p. So obviously one minus p is the, you know, probability of it or the proportion that it isn't happening in. So this is going to technically be our failures. Um, so this is something that, you know, you also see it written as. But yeah, so basically they both have to be at least five in order for us to use it. And then for means, uh, we're basically saying that we want to make sure that our sample size is at least 25. Um, but then, 20, yeah, 25. These are, and that's another thing. People often ask, you know, well, what if it's 26 or what if it's, you know, 24? They're, they're more like general numbers. Uh, the main point is to realize that you want it to be bigger always. Um, but these are good, like, kind of benchmarkers for you to kind of decide if you're between two. Um, and then this is, as you see is here, like, so if it's moderately skewed, um, you know, we want it to be 30. And then if it's strongly skewed, we want it to be 40. So the higher, um, so the more skewed it is, the more unrepresentative of a normal approximation, the uh, bigger sample size we want so that it represents that normal approximation on there. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can see the smallest sample size here, 15, we can accept if there's no outliers and it's not skewed because that basically means that it's already going to kind of represent like a normal distribution, so you're like fine to use it. So, all right. What else? All right, let's do some reviews. So, let's try these out. So, 30% of cell phones in King County, Washington use Sprint for their wireless service. If a random sample of 25 people with cell phones is selected in that county, then the percentage of them with Sprint service will be around 30%, give or take a standard deviation of what? So try solving this one out and go ahead and type your answer into the chat box and then we will review them together. Okay, let's review this one. So, you guys can answer. I mean, you guys, not not all at once. I don't, we don't have to go crazy up in here, but you guys are more than welcome to participate. Thanks, Marlon. Let me, okay, I'm trying to get cuter color up here. Okay, so if we do recall, uh, when we're trying to find our standard deviation, um, well, first of all, you want to do, and this is what I was talking about, you kind of always want to break it down. So, are we talking about categorical variables or quantitative variables? So um, in this case, it's talking about 30% of the cell phone's users have Sprint. So um, cell phone wireless carrier, that's gonna be a categorical variable, which means that we know we're gonna be using proportions. Um, I mean, that's also given because, you know, 30%, that's gonna be our 0.3 portion. Um, oh man. So anyway, so then when you, are trying to find this, uh, when you're trying to find the, what do you call it, snare deviation, excuse me, you want to do your square root of P times 
one minus P and then divide by your sample size. And you end up getting about 0 0.092, which is why the answer is gonna be A, because that's, if you multiply that by 100, that's how you get that. Um, square rooting might've been an issue for some of you. If you didn't square root it, that might've been something. Um, I mean, if we did actually plug all this in, it would be square root um, 0 0.3 times one minus 0 0.3, which would be 0.7, and then divide by N, which is R25. Um, so does that make sense though, how we solve that? Yep, <laughs> and actually it's funny, the last time um, I did this problem, I, I remember I was doing it and I, I kept getting the wrong answer and I was like, what, what am I doing? <laughs> like, I really don't understand what I'm doing. I was like, it's the calculator's fault, definitely not me. Like, wait, I'm not wrong. And then just that freaking square root, always. So yeah, um, but for those, I remember I was so offended in second grade my, my professor now, my teacher said to me that I made a careless mistake and I was really offended by it. I was like, you call me careless, but I look at it now and it's like, okay, well, a careless mistake means you understand the concept. It's just a, you know, a little floozy that you did. So it's okay, Miss Brennan, I, I forgive you. I'm not scarred. Okay, awesome. Good job, guys. All right, so let's try another one. All right, a retail carpet business has primarily residential customers together with a few commercial customers that make large purchases. Overall, the business sells an average of 100 square yards of carpet with a median sale of 40 square yards and a standard deviation of 90 square yards, which is the following be the closest to a normal distribution. So read through these answers. Let me know what you think it is. Go ahead and type that into the chat box and then we will discuss what the right one is. All right, we got a duel. All right, just kidding. All right, so let's see. I try to switch up the color. I think it, you know, keeps us engaged. So let's look at this. So it's asking, um, we want to say what's close to the, the a normal distribution. So this kind of goes back to us describing, you know, um, which different, like which type of uh, distribution is, you know, has a big enough sample, but is also representative of that population to be close to a normal distribution. So um, so what you want to look at first is discuss, um, you know, if we think it's going to be a, you know, so it says histogram or sampling distribution. Okay, well, um, 
the issue with the first two is it's saying like the next 100 and the last 100, that's not randomized. That's very sequential. That's why it wouldn't be um, A or B because it's too sequential. It's not randomized. Um, you know, 100 sales is good, but you would want to take those, um, you know, you want to make sure they're randomized and you wouldn't want to only take those ones. You want to take them across because that, you know, there could have been a confounding variable during that time for those 100 sales, um, you know, that was impacting them that, you know, didn't happen for the rest of the sales. So that's why we don't want to use those. Um, and then C, um, hopefully you realize definitely wasn't correct because it was just saying the next sale. So that's like way too small of a sample size. So that's why D would have to be our answer because it's saying um, the average of the yardage, which means that we're going to randomize it. Um, and then since if we randomize it, then we're going to have um, less bias. And then we're probably going to be more representative in that case. So, so yeah, our answer is B. Does that make sense to everyone how we got B? Ooh, yes in all caps. That was, that was passionate. I like it. All right, cool. Some riveting stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Ooh, we're talking about carpets again. Okay, reach out for our business. Da -da 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 -da. We'll skip that first part because we just talked about it. Overall, the business sells an average of 100 square yards of carpet with a median sale of 40 square yards and a standard deviation of 90 square yards. Standard deviation of the average amount of carpet sold to the next 100 customers would be what? So this is kind of, you know, reviewing a little bit of conceptual nature, but also um, those equations uh, that we also used in question number one. So try that out and then we will review it. Wow, superstars. Yeah, you guys are absolutely correct. Good job. So if we just, I mean, you guys obviously get this, but we'll still just go over it um, just to, you know, confirm. So we want to first just remember that first we're talking about uh, quantitative variables. Dog. Um, which means we're going to be talking about means. So we know that we're going to use the equation for our standard deviation. Um, is going to be the equation for our um, sigma, so our standard deviation of the population over the square root of our sample size. So if we were to do that here, we have that um, 90 
that's our standard deviation here, the population, then divided by our square root of our sample size, which is 100. So then you get nine square yards. So our answer here is gonna be C. Woohoo, good job guys, super proud. So hopefully, I mean, the more and more you practice these things, it's kind of, you know, will come more, uh, it'll just come easier to you, you know, you wouldn't have to really think through all that, like quantitative, this is this, but those are the steps I always just like to go through, you know, in order to understand it and then to get to that point. So, okay, this is a good conceptual question. This will be our last one for tonight. So, uh, so would, we would like to use a normal distribution to calculate the chances about how a sample average might turn out. In which of the following situations would the normal approximation work the worst? So this is a, it's kind of counterintuitive. This, which It's asking basically, which one of these would you definitely not want to use? Which one's the worst? So try this one out and then we will go over it. Good job, guys. This is fun. I'm sorry. <laughs> so one time I went a good like 10 minutes, not 10 minutes, but a, a while I, I was still muted and I was just talking, talking, talking. And no one decided to tell me that, you know, I, I was not unmuted. So, but now it tells me if I'm not, so it's good. Okay. So anyway, yes, good job. The answer here is going to be B. So you guys definitely understand this because remember what we were talking about, we don't want it to be skewed, but if it is skewed, we want to have a large sample size. So histogram number two is um, skewed. Wow, not <laughs> skewed, and then it's skewed to the right. Our, this one's gonna be symmetrical slash normal. Um, so in this case, you know, we, if we had a sample size of five from histogram one, okay, that's, that's fine, honestly. I mean, it's not fine because it's still a small sample size, but that's better than having a sample size five from histogram two, because since this one's so skewed, we wanna have a much larger sample size. Um, so D would be important, you know, out of, you know, those two, we would want to choose D. And same thing, you know, between these two, you would also want to choose um, C between A, uh, just because there's a larger sample size, but B would be the worst because it's the smallest sample size for the most skewed and so the least normal um, distribution there. So that's why our answer is B. Amazing, great job. All right, all right, cool. So like I said, that was a pretty quick lesson. I feel like I say that every week. I don't know. I think in comparison to STAT 200, sometimes those like, take like hours. So I'm like, <laughs> but um, okay. So yeah, so the, these reviews obviously are on the YouTube channel. Um, and thank you. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, our next review will be Thursday, March 29th. We are just cruising through the semester. You guys got this. You can do it. And um, I think I got everyone's pens to email. So thanks for coming by and keeping me company. <laughs> and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And don't study too hard. <laughs>